I will start with the call to worship. Right. To you, O oh God, we lift up the spirit of our whole selves. I'll wait for you to see what I see. <laughs> Oh God, we trust. Can everybody see oh that? God, we trust. Yeah. Same I guess we should Same. be muted. Yeah, we probably should be muted. Okay, I will start over. I'm sorry. Is everybody ready? You're muted, so I hope you're ready. I'm going to start over. Okay. okay. <laughs> to you, oh God, we lift up the spirit of our whole selves. Oh God, God we, trust we trust unashamedly in you, you. seeking that seeking you that be you not ashamed of us. us. May we begin our Lenten journey together in right relationships. Teach us, Teach us show us, show us. Guide us in your, us in your paths. Grow us to know your ways, ways clearly. You are the God of our salvation and the sustainer of good relations. For you, we wait. May integrity, a clean conscience, and upright living preserve us. Amen. Amen. Now for the unison prayer. As in days of old, creator God, we come to look for your signs of covenant promises. Like the rainbow days of Noah, we see and know your signs and hear your voice again, directing us to the places of preparation and transformation in our lives and in our world. Thank you, God, for your covenant signs in this season of Lent. Amen. Now for the communal prayer of confession. Siblings in Christ, in our daily lives, we need the gift of the season of Lent. These 40 days can help us restore right relationships with God and with others. This is a fine time to focus, clear our hearts and minds of distraction, and reorient and restore our whole selves. May God be with us. Amen. Now for the communal prayer. Creating and renewing God, in this Lenten season, we each need the opportunity to clear our eyes of the glaze of indifference and apathy. Help us get our minds off of distractions, obsessions, and self-pity so that we don't feel helpless. Help us to start over. Reorient head and heart so that we may fill our whole selves with life-affirming activities and thoughts. May I be in right relationship with you and all your creation and join the United Church of Christ in overcoming violence, hunger, and injustice. May I find courage and clarity to assist me in works of justice and compassion, which make daily life bearable for many. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. In the communal assurance of God's steadfastness, may God hear our prayers and even in our human frailty, promises to be with us in the wilderness times. Observe, find comfort, and offer with courage to restore and build relationships among God's people. Experience a new and renewed sense of hope. Amen. And now we have the children's moment with Debbie. Or as I can also be known as Will I Am. 
I don't know. Does hopefully everyone on knows what one of these are? <laughs> Technical difficulties. This is easier in person. Well, as we begin our Linton journey, I wanted to talk about tuning in. Can everyone hear me okay? Um, I really like listening to the radio. Not always this one, but in the car, I always enjoy listening to the radio. And sometimes it's hard to tune in. Although this morning it's not too bad. This is old style. But as we go through our Lenten journey, I try to turn that off. We want to remember that tuning in is not always easy. Uh, you know, I usually listen to the radio in the car. I don't even know how these work anymore. Uh, and I have certain stations I like to listen to, and usually not the same ones as uh, my kids, but um, sometimes when I'm listening to them, as you could tell, they, they're a little fuzzy and staticky, and they make it hard to hear the music of the um, station or the words that someone's saying. But uh, which station would we rather listen? Sorry. Which station would we rather listen to? The ones that are staticky or nice and clear? And obviously we generally prefer the clear one. And our life, our life and relationships with God is very much like tuning this radio to different stations. And sometimes we need tuning ourselves. This is the beginning of Lent, and many of us already know that Lent is a time we give up or turn away from something we enjoy or something that controls us, showing a sacrifice for God as we begin preparing for Easter. Um, I don't know if anyone on our Zoom today plans, up, plans on giving up anything, very often, people tend to give up those bad habits that they enjoy, like eating too many desserts, candy, chocolate, cookies, maybe McDonald's french fries, or the morning ritual of drinking five cups of caffeinated coffee before going to work. I'm not sure I should give that one up. Uh, some other people give up activities they enjoy, like watching too much TV or playing video games. But you can give up other things as well. You might bite your nails or you, maybe the boys fight with each other. They might give that up or back talking to your parents. That might be a good one. But how is giving up something during Lent making a sacrifice for God? Why is it important for us to make the sacrifice to God during the season of Lent? As we make the sacrifice of giving up something we enjoy or something that is a bad habit during Lent, we begin the process of tuning our lifestyles so that we can have a clearer and cleaner life for Christ. The way we live our life is called our lifestyle. So when we improve our lifestyle by giving up a bad habit, we are tuning our life. God wants us to always be tuning our life by giving up those bad habits and replacing them with good habits. So making a sacrifice to God during Lent season not only means giving up something you enjoy or something that controls you, it also means trying to trade old bad habits with good. And like the radio, if I knew how to turn it on, Now it's not tuned up. But we can become more in tune with God and our life. There you go. 
how about we do the pretzel prayer and think about what we're going to tune our life to. God, I love you. Help me to love others as you love me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Debbie. And um, here's someone who's not giving up anything for Lent right here. Lover boy. If you uh, were able to join us on our, um, our Wednesday, Ash Wednesday service, you would have heard Melinda talk about how dogs don't need to give anything up for Lent because they're already tuned in. Um, another thing that people give up for Lent um, are certain words or thoughts. Um, some people give up saying bad words or um, some of you may remember there was a movement with uh, a wristband and you were supposed to give up complaining. And if you made a complaint uh, or you were whiny, then you had to put it on the other wrist and start all over again. I think there's some people that are still wearing that wristband. I'm not sure. But as we come into our time of prayer, let us consider what it is in our lives that we want less of and what in our lives we want more of. We continue to pray for folks affected by the extreme cold and the ice and snow, which happened in Texas and other places that do not usually get ice and snow and for the, for the suffering of the people. Let us continue in prayer. Beloved God, we are thankful for everything. Help us to be aware and mindful of all of the blessings that you give us. Help us to be a people of thanks and praise to you. Help us to be tuned to you in our bodies, minds, and spirits. As we journey into Lent, let us consider the two things that we say with our words and our actions that we often say we are scared in many different ways that don't look scary um, and some that are. Let us remember that the other thing that we say is, I love you. And that is something that you say to us a lot. And let us consider what the third thing is that we might say or be saying. For those whose suffering is known to us, we lift them up to you. For those whose suffering is known only to a few or perhaps not even to themselves, known only to you, we lift them up to you. And for those among us who have blessings in abundance, Help us to remember those as well. We pray for our communities and the people we are connected with and the people that we are not connected with, that they may be under your protection and guidance, that their hearts may be open to your leading in justice and hope, that we may be a people of peace and love connected with you. And as you have taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we come into our time of scripture, remember that this is a scripture that Jesus himself knew well and also shared the words with us. Okay. Our scripture today is from Psalm 22. 
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you, they cried and were saved. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who seek me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. And they open wide their mouths at me like ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all, all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh, help, come quickly. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who feared the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, all shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Uh, we'll begin with uh, the song by our special guest, Darius Will.
ready, Darius. The floor is yours. Awesome. Uh, well, first, I would like to say thank you for having me. Um, I forgot to uh, mix up the audio, but um, I'm honored. I'm thankful to be here. A uh, special thank you to Jessica um, and to Pastor Kimmy for allowing me to have this time and to speak uh, on behalf of Black History Month. Um, I just wanted to take a little bit of time just to give uh, my thoughts um, just about, in general, some of the struggles that have been going on um, and as well just as the blessings that I've also been receiving. Um, as a lot of you guys know, uh, 2020 was a, was a rough year and, uh, it was really terrible for a lot of us. Um, but it was especially hard hitting for, uh, the black community. Um, there were a lot of different things going on. Um, but the, the spark that really ignited the fire was the death of George Floyd and of Breonna Taylor. And from that just stemmed a whole bunch of difficult conversations that a lot of us needed to have. Um, the roots of white supremacy go back as far as the late 1800s, even further. Um, and it's affected every aspect of our society in America, especially for the people of color. Um, I mean, if you think about it, Jim Crow and segregation was less than 60 years ago. I mean, that's our grandparents for some of us. Um, for some of us, that's our parents. And I feel that it is our job to not necessarily right the wrongs of the past, but learn from it and be better. Uh, it's been difficult growing up as a black man in America. There have been a lot of challenges, a lot of insults, um, a lot of a lot of different things. And um, I think Psalms 22 is a wonderful scripture because there are times where I just I ask myself and I ask God, you know, why would he create me the way I am if people treat me the way that they do? But it's important to know that God doesn't create mistakes, that he creates people perfect just the way they are. And he creates us for a singular purpose. Um, and he creates us to tell a story. He, tell, he tells us to go and tell it on the mountains. And so, my life has been spent trying to spread the goodness of the gospel wherever I can by leading by example. And I think that this year is a good year to remind ourselves and just in general um, people that God doesn't make mistakes. So no matter what we look like, no matter what we believe in or who we are inside, all that matters is how we glorify God through our actions and through telling other people the goodness of Christ. Now, I could, you know, I could preach for hours about the things that he's blessed me with this past year. Um, over the past year, I've gotten my degree. I have my, I have my own apartment. Um, I have a well-paying job. Um, you know, I've been truly blessed. But the matter of the fact is, is that if I don't give Christ the glory, then all of it was for naught. And I feel like a lot of times nowadays, people don't give Christ his just due. And so I want to make it perfectly clear that sometimes God gives us trials and tribulations just to see how we react to them after he pulls us out. And as a person who has had a life full of tribulations, it is amazing to see what God has done after he's pulled me out. And I'm excited to see and continue to see what he does for me in my personal life. Uh, so again, thank you very much for having me speak. Um, it's been an honor. It's been a privilege. And uh, that's all I have.
Adarius, thanks so much for being with us today. I, um, I know that you have been really good about sharing your experience on your Facebook page. And are you also on Twitter and Instagram? Um, I am on Instagram. Follow you? Yeah? Yeah. I'm on Instagram. I don't post as much as I do Facebook nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, my Instagram account is more so for me just kind of posting, you know, mm -hmm. things and uh, a little update every now and then. But um, I do have an Instagram. Um, I'm not planning on making a Twitter until I release my uh, first album. So I'll probably wait until then. That sounds good. Well, when you get ready to release it, um, please share it on our page too, so that we'll be able to share it with you. And I think a lot of us will look forward to what your next move is and are grateful for you and for your parents and your family and the good way that they have brought you up to be the man that we are speaking with today. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Um, some of you may remember that when um, Adarius first started singing with us, his parents lived in my neighborhood. And one morning I forgot to pick him up. <laughs> I know, you know, it was, I was like, oh no. Um, he, he called me and said, are you running late? And I was already, mo I was already in St. Joe. So, you know, I, I value your sense of humor and your heart and, and that you're a very forgiving person because otherwise, you know, it, it would be hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so we're thankful for you and we thank you for coming to see us. And when we are live again, perhaps you will come and sing for us and talk to us again in the future. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, the future is, is full of possibilities. Um, sure. And so I will never say never. Um, but you might be in New York. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you never, you never know. You never know what life has to throw at you. So uh, I'm hoping that, you know, I can come back every now and then and, and pop in and say hello to you guys. That would be great. So now we are going to continue on with our service. And I know that Jesse has the offering invitation and maybe a few words. At this time, we're invited to offer ourselves to God in all ways. You are blessed by this word and our move to support Zion. There is a PayPal option on our website with a link from this page. We're an open and affirming LGBTQAAA celebrating church in the beautiful city of St. Joseph, Missouri. And as always, we covet your thoughts and prayers. Uh, on this page is the link um, and our uh, address and phone number. Let us pray for the offering. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this time and for Darius and this time that we can learn more about uh, history and our role in it, um, both bad and good. And uh, we ask that you help us uh, be a anti-racist church and that we use the funds for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and thank you. Um, so hear the benediction. May you be love and hope May you be bearers of God's light, grace, and peace today and every day. May you rejoice in God who is love divine. 
every day fully revealed in the face of Jesus of Nazareth, who comes to us as the Christ. So we thank you so much. We do have our congregational meeting following. And if 